Hello students, in this session we shall study about axiomatic approach to probability. Before we begin that, let us discuss the solution to the assignment problem. When three coins are tossed, then there are 2 to the power 3 that is equal to 8 possible outcomes. That is sample space is equal to h h h comma h h t h t h comma h t t comma t h h comma t h t comma t t h comma t t t and a is equal to h h h b is equal to h h t comma h t h comma t h h c is equal to t t t d is equal to h h h comma h h t comma h t h comma h t t here a intersection b is equal to phi b intersection c is equal to phi a intersection c is equal to phi c intersection d is equal to phi and a intersection b intersection c also is equal to phi that is here a and b a and c b and c c and d and a b and c are mutually exclusive. Second, since events A and C have only one sample point, here A and C are simple events. Third, since events B and D have two or more sample points, hence B, D are compound events. Now, let us discuss about the asymmetric approach to probability. In earlier sessions, we have considered random experiments, sample space and events associated with these experiments. In our day to day life, we use many words about the chances of occurrence of events. Probability theory attempts to quantify these chances of occurrence or non occurrences of events. In earlier classes, we have studied some methods of assigning probability to an event associated with an experiment, having known the number of total outcomes. Axiomatic approach is another way of describing probability of an event. In this approach, some axioms or rules are depicted to assign probabilities. Let S be the sample space of a random experiment. The probability P is a real valued function where domain is the power set of S and range is the interval 0, 1 satisfying the following axioms. First, for any event E, P of E is greater than or equal to 0. Second, P of S is equal to 1. Third, if E and F are mutually exclusive events, then probability of E union F is equal to probability of E plus probability of F. It follows from third that P of phi is equal to 0. To prove this, we take F is equal to phi and note that E and phi are disjoint events. Therefore, from axiom 3, we get probability of E union phi is equal to probability of E plus probability of phi or probability of E is equal to probability of E plus probability of phi that is probability of phi is equal to 0. Let S be a sample space containing outcomes omega 1, omega 2 and so on omega n that is s is equal to omega 1, omega 2 and so on omega n. It follows from the axiomatic definition of probability that p omega lies between 0 and 1 that is 0 less than equal to p omega less than equal to 1 
for each omega i belonging to s. Second, probability of omega 1 plus probability of omega 2 plus so on plus probability of omega n is equal to 1. Third, for any event a, p of a is equal to summation of all the probabilities p omega i, where omega i belongs to a. For example, in a coin tossing experiment, we can assign the number 1 upon 2 to each of the outcomes h and t. Probability of getting a head is 1 upon 2 and probability of getting a tail is again 1 upon 2. Clearly, this assignment satisfies both the conditions. That is, each number is neither less than 0 nor greater than 1 and probability of head plus probability of tail is equal to 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 2 that is equal to 1. Therefore, in this case we can say that probability of h is equal to 1 upon 2 and probability of t also is equal to 1 upon 2. If we take p of h is equal to 1 upon 4 and p of t is equal to 3 upon 4, does this assignment satisfy the conditions of axiomatic approach? Yes, in this case probability of h is equal to 1 upon 4 and probability of t is equal to 3 upon 4. We find that both the assignments 1 and 2 are valid for probability of h and t. In fact, we can assign the number p and 1 minus p to both the outcomes such that 0 less than equal to p less than equal to 1 and p of h plus p of t is equal to p plus 1 minus p is equal to 1. This assignment too satisfies both the conditions of the axiomatic approach of probability. Hence, we can say that there are many ways rather infinite to assign probabilities to outcomes of an experiment. We now consider some examples. Let a sample space be s is equal to omega 1, omega 2, so on omega n. Which of the following assignments of probabilities to each outcome are valid? Here we have got different outcomes omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, omega 4, omega 5 and omega 6. And in case 1, all the probabilities here are 1 upon 6, 1 upon 6, 1 upon 6 and so on. In case of B, first omega 1 probability is 1 and all rest others are 0. In the third case, first probability is 1 upon 8, second is 2 upon 3, third is 1 upon 3, fourth is again 1 upon 3, fifth is minus 1 upon 4 and sixth is minus 1 upon 3. In it is 1 upon 12, 1 upon 12, 1 upon 6 in 3 cases and again 3 upon 2. And E, we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. Now, let us look into the solution. In first case, each of the number p omega i is positive and less than 1. Second condition, sum of the probabilities is equal to 1 upon 6 plus 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 1 upon 6 that on addition gives us 6 upon 6 that is equal to 1. Therefore, the assignment is valid. In the second case, first condition each of the number p of omega i is either 0 or 1. Condition 2 we have 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 that gives us 1. Therefore, the assignment is valid. In the third case, let us look at the first condition. Two of the probabilities, probability of omega 5 and probability of omega 6 are negative. The assignment is not valid as it should lie between 0 and 1. Look at the fourth case. Since p of omega 6 is 3 upon 2, which is obviously greater than 1, the assignment is again not valid. And in case E, since sum of the probabilities 
point 0.1 plus point 0.2 plus point 0.3 plus point 0.4 plus point 0.5 plus point 0.6 is equal to 2.1. The assignment is again not valid. Now, let us discuss about the probability of an event. Let S be a sample space associated with the experiment examining three consecutive pens produced by a machine and classified as good that is non-defective and bad that is defective. We may get 0, 1, 2 or 3 defective pens as result of this examination. A sample space associated with this experiment is S is equal to B B B comma B B G B G B comma G B B comma B G G comma G B G comma G G B comma G G G where B stands for defective or bad pen and G for non defective or good pen. Let the probabilities assigned to the outcomes be as follows. Sample points B B B the probability here is 1 upon 8, B B G probability is 1 upon 8, similarly B G B probability is 1 upon 8 and you can see for each the probability is the same 1 upon 8. Let event A be there is exactly one defective pen and event B be there are at least two defective pens. Hence, A is equal to B G G comma G B G comma G G B and B is equal to B B G comma B G B comma G B B comma B B B. Now, P of A is equal to summation of P omega i for every omega i belonging to A. That is equal to probability of B G G plus probability of G B G plus probability of G G B that is equal to 1 upon 8 plus 1 upon 8 plus 1 upon 8 that gives us 3 upon 8. And probability of B is equal to summation of all the probabilities P omega i where omega i belongs to B. Here also we can find the probabilities to be 1 upon 8 in each case and thus we get 4 upon 8 that is equal to 1 upon 2. Now, let us discuss about probabilities of equally likely outcomes. Let a sample space of an experiment be S is equal to omega 1, omega 2, so on, omega n. Let all the outcomes are equally likely to occur. That is, the chance of occurrence of each simple event must be same. That is, probability of omega i is equal to p for all omega i is belonging to S, where 0 is less than equal to p is less than equal to 1. Since summation i ranging from 1 to n, p of omega i is equal to 1, that is p plus p plus so on plus p n times is equal to 1 or n p is equal to 1, that is p is equal to 1 upon n. Let S be a sample space and E be an event such that n of S is equal to n and n of E is equal to m. If each outcome is equally likely, then it follows that probability of E is equal to m upon n that is equal to number of outcomes favorable to E upon total possible outcomes. Now, let us discuss about probability of the event A or B. Let us now find the probability of event A or B that is P of A union B. Let A be H H T comma H T H comma T H H and B be equal to H T H comma T H H comma H H H B two events associated with tossing of a coin thrice. Clearly, we can see here A union B is equal to H H T H T H T H H and H H H and probability of A union B is equal to probability of H H T plus probability of H T H plus probability of T H H plus probability of H H H. 
if all the outcomes are equally likely then probability of A union B is equal to 1 upon 8 plus 1 upon 8 plus 1 upon 8 plus 1 upon 8 that is equal to 4 upon 8 that is equal to 1 upon 2. Also probability of A is equal to probability of HHT plus probability of HTH plus probability of THH that is equal to 3 upon 8 and probability of B is equal to probability of HTH plus probability of THH plus probability of HHH that is equal to 3 upon 8. Therefore, probability of A plus probability of B is equal to 3 upon 8 plus 3 upon 8 that is equal to 6 upon 8. It is clear that probability of A union B is not equal to probability of A plus probability of B. The points HTH and THH are common to both A and B. In the computation of probability of A plus probability of B, the probabilities of points HTH and THH that is elements of A intersection B are included twice. Thus, to get the probability of A union B, we have to subtract the probabilities of the sample points in A intersection B from probability of A plus probability of B. That is probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus summation probability of omega i for every omega i belonging to A intersection B that is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. Thus, we observe that probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. In general, if A and B are any two events associated with the random experiment, then A union B is equal to A union B minus A, where A and B minus A are mutually exclusive and B is equal to A intersection B union B minus A, where A intersection B and B minus A are mutually exclusive. Using axiom 3 of probability, we get probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus A. Take this as first equation and probability of B is equal to probability of A intersection B plus probability of B minus A. Take this as second equation. Now, subtracting second equation from first, we have probability of A union B minus probability of B is equal to probability of A minus probability of A intersection B or probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. This result can be verified by observing the following Venn diagram probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. You can see here this portion shaded portion represents A minus B and the common portion here is A intersection B. Similarly, this shaded portion represents B minus A. This whole set is A and this complete set is B and this expresses the sample space of the set. If A and B are disjoint sets that is they are mutually exclusive events then A intersection B is equal to phi. Therefore, probability of A intersection B is equal to P of phi that is equal to 0. Thus, probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B for mutually exclusive events of A and B. Now, let us discuss about probability of event not E. Consider the event A is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8 associated with the experiment of drawing a card from the deck of 10 cards numbered from 1 to 10. Clearly, the sample space is S is equal to 1, 2, 3, so on till 10. If all the outcomes 1, 2 till 10 are considered to be equally likely, then the probability of each outcome is 1 upon 10. Now, probability of A is equal to probability of 2 
plus probability of 4 plus probability of 6 plus probability of 8 that is equal to 1 upon 10 in each case and we add to get 4 upon 10 that is simplified as 2 upon 5. Also event not A that is A complement is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 10. Now probability of A complement is equal to probability of 1 plus probability of 3 plus probability of 5 probability of 7 plus probability of 9 plus probability of 10 that is equal to 6 upon 10 that is obviously 3 upon 5. Thus probability of A complement is equal to 3 upon 5 that is equal to 1 minus 2 upon 5 that is equal to 1 minus P of A. Also we know that A complement and A are mutually exclusive and exhaustive events that is A intersection A complement is equal to phi and A union A complement is equal to S or probability of A union A complement is equal to probability of S. Now probability of A plus probability of A complement is equal to 1 by using axioms 2 and 3 or probability of A complement is equal to probability of not A. That means probability of A complement is equal to 1 minus probability of A. So students, hope you enjoyed learning the chapter on probability. Thank you. Thank you.